Okay, we got day number two upon us. We've got this trailer topped off. We don't have this field done yet, but we do have a field down the road here that we're gonna cart the corn out of. In other words, we're not gonna take a truck down there. It's just a half a mile down the road. And uh, we're gonna get down there before the traffic gets bad. And they were talking about a rain shower today things are nice and dry here right now so rather than make a mess out onto the road we'll go ahead and combine this field quickly for right now so we'll join up with you when we get down to that field well we're in this field just down the road from the other one we're maybe a half a mile or so from the other field. We got a hold of Sarge. He brought his truck directly to the field. And we're kind of loading him direct. Now this was one of our first no-till fields here this year. You can see a majority of the residue on the ground. And I actually staggered the rows. So if you look, there's an old row of corn right in between these two rows here and then you see another one there the yield is not doing too bad I'm actually hitting one 190 to 200 right there coming up through the middle of this field got a pretty decent sized ear there and uh, we had a decent crop in here last year as well now we wanted to get into this field before the traffic picked up. If we had waited any later in the day, we'd have trouble getting in and out of here towards, you know, that three, four o'clock. So we've got a partial bin that we can put on that truck yet to get it loaded. We've got two small bins on him already. We'll take one more. Give him a little hand sign that we need one more. And, and he can take it. So things are going pretty good here. is running a little yeah this is crowding 19% moisture but at least it's down below 20 and it's not going to cost that much to get it dried down at least it's not 27 or 8 But this shouldn't take us that long. It's only 12 acres, I believe, in this field. All right, we are just headed into day number three. This will be our, our third full day of combining we just got done with this farm here this is the last bin of corn that i combine here this one particular field that we're in right here is uh about 13 acres and um this is land that we rent so we're just going to kind of fly the drone out through from this back field here out through these other fields that this other field that we did now i have flown the drone over here before and yeah, we got a little bit of sun that we're working with but uh there's about 120 acres here in this one field that we started with now we did a no-till piece down the road 
that was about 12 acres we've got about 15 acres that we're going to do and then we've got about 60 acres of no-till corn that we're going to get into after we get this next 15 acres done now i've flown the drone over here before this 120 acre piece here when we bought it it was broke up in about 13 different fields now you're probably asking why don't you just clear out those spots that you see in front of the camera well that's all rock right there the um, topsoil is very shallow over here on this farm like I said I have videoed over here before and we have done a fair amount of clearing but on these areas where there is crop not planted it is just uh, it's just full of rock now that's the field that we just came out of you can see the combine and the grain buggies just headed out through the hedgerow now uh, this particular farm here joins up with another farm that we own and you can kind of see off in the distance there and we've got a, a pretty good sized chunk of land that's all hooked together here and this one back portion here that's out straight in front of us kind of a rectangular piece that belongs to uh, that farm now this 120 acre field is kind of a mongrel to um, do any kind of field work in we've got one good big large section here that you know there's nice long rounds in but with these um, rock islands and ledges and whatever it kind of makes for a pain in the butt the headlands on this 120 acre field with a 16 row corn planter um, is 30 acres <laughs> so the reason why i go three times around it is just because some of the ends aren't square and it just makes for a um, better uh, a better way to plant the uh, the straight rows now there used to be a set of trolley tracks that went through on this farm and were just about on top of where they went through and the, the trolley tracks the trolley only ran for like three years after it was put in and it went straight across over into some other land that we actually rent so we're going to get moved out of uh, this farm here and get into a couple of smaller pieces get them done and then we will get into some more uh, no-till the no-till turned out pretty good and the reason why we've done some no-till over here is just because of the way the land lays uh, we've got a side hill over in front of us here off to the right that's real steep i'll get the drone up here a little later but this is somewhat of a hunter's paradise over here i've seen a ton of deer while i was combining on this uh one field here i actually had one buck here the other night that uh, jumped over the top of the cornet coming from my left side jumped over the top of the cornet went over into the hedgerow he got spooked from something in the hedgerow and um, he come running out back towards me of course I had the lights on he was kind of blinded and then he turned abruptly just before um, get caught in the head so a friend of mine neighbor he ran a uh, the guy running his combine ran a, a good sized deer into the head just a couple of years ago so Sarah's got just a little bit more to put on the tractor trailer over here and that'll be loaded I 
guess Alex is just left with a uh, load here a little bit ago. So we are going to get on with the rest of the uh, day here and we will join up with you guys here uh, in a little while. Looks like Sarah has beat me to uh, the road. So right where, right where I am at is where the trolley tracks went through. So you can kind of see the straight line there where they went through. So they went through right, right there. Now yeah, you can't see the you can't see the um, spot where they went through. So we'll join up with you uh, a little later on here in the day. So we are on a different farm. There's three small fields on this farm. Got the trucks all lined up. And this should go a little faster here today. I did have to wait a fair amount for the grain buggy to get to and fro yesterday because we were so far off of the road. So Sarah's got a little bit more to put on that one truck there. And then that one will be loaded and then she can start working on the other trucks but man this weather is unreal sun's shining got a light breeze up blowing now this corn here it's running a little wetter than uh, what we were in now the farm that we were on is just kind of around that corner there and um, the next one we have to do is just down the road. Now those trolley tracks that I was talking about, they ended up going through just on the other side of that uh, far field there. So we'll just keep plugging away, but this is shelling really nice. Going through the combine like water. Everything is working very well. I shouldn't say that too many times because I end up jinxing myself, but it is what it is. Now, I ended up getting a comment here on one of the previous videos. Why such a small head, Andy? Well, this combine would handle an eight row head. Would I like an eight row head? Yes. Do I have an eight row head? No. We did put a lot of work into this head this year. We should have probably bought an eight row head and uh, put the money into that, but we didn't. Um, I don't know what the future holds here. I don't know if we're gonna be going to a combine that we would use a 12 row head on. I don't know if we bought an eight row head similar to this one if we could use it on a future combine down the road i don't know so i don't want to go and buy an eight row head now and then not want to use it on the next combine that we end up using in the next few years so the six row head works fine you get into heavy yielding corn um, it's about all this combine would want. Again, it would handle an eight row. However, we would have to take the head off every time we moved a considerable distance down the road. And I feel if you have to take a head off of a combine, you might as well be taking a 12 row head off to move from one farm to another. Now the other option is, is to have a folding head. And if you're gonna have a folding head, a 12 row costs just about as much as an eight row costs. 
Now we could not put an eight row folding head on this combine. This combine doesn't have the feeder house heavy enough to handle an eight row folding head. Another thing with this combine, this combine is a level land combine. It does not have contour master on the feeder house. In other words, the feeder house is not going to follow the contour of the land. Being that we have side hills and ditches and stuff like that, we might have the combine head rubbing the ground on one side and it might be above the ear on the other side if we were to put an eight row head on this combine. That's gonna be very rare of a situation, but you could run into a situation like that. So my father, he's just got back here with truck 18. He's gonna take truck nine. Sarah's putting the rest of her grain buggy load onto Alex's truck. So we'll keep plugging away here. Well, we got done with those three small pieces. There's roughly 15 acres there all together. Now we're into this larger piece. There's about 30 acres here. And this was no-till planted. Decent crop in here. And it's a good time to get in here and get out of here. Because as you can see, we have a blacktop driveway that has split the field. This field we rent, and there is a um, real nice house in behind me here, and this is their uh, driveway. So we like to get in and out of here when it's not muddy, because we don't want to get mud on their driveway. We want to leave it just as clean as we found it. So that's gonna do it for this video. I've got a landing made up over there. We've got three trucks moved into the field there and we're just gonna keep after it. It's a pretty good stand of uh, corn that was no-till planted. We've no-tilled this three years in a row now. So I guess you could say this is corn on corn. Talking like the big guys talk. So that's going to do it for this video, folks. I want to thank you for watching, and we will catch you at the next video.